Welcome to Tech 2022. My name is Alec Du. I'm Chief Architect at SAP Success Factors, responsible for our car transformation effort. Today, join together with me is Anjo Lienka, and together we will cover the topic for next generation cloud delivery and cloud native architecture transformation. Hey, hi, good day to all. I'm Vice President of SAP Success Factor Cloud Migration Engineering. Thank you, Anjo. So we'll cover today's session with the following agenda. I will start to talk about the SAP Success Pack solutions overall overview, and I will hand over to Anil to talk about the journey, the migration journey, and the benefit our customer are getting, the migration approach, and how do we validate to make sure it's a smooth transition for our customer. Then I will cover the cloud native architecture transformation after the migration. So what is SAP Success Factors? What we provide to SAP to customer is a suite of HR technology solutions to help organization to put people at the center of the business to redefine the employee experience and to make people feel they are connected, supported, and empowered at every step of their journey. Today, we have a comprehensive portfolio covering the need of end-to-end -end HR business processes from recruiting, onboarding, learning, growing, pay, and benefits. Our solution supports thousands of customers, hundreds of millions of users globally, with localized support in over 100 countries globally, and there are over 300 ecosystem apps available in SAP Store to allow our customers and the partners to extend our solutions. In addition, we help organizations to prepare the need for the future workforce by listening to their employees' need and providing the necessary tools for them to be successful and make real business impacts. We are working on a very exciting new features like whole self model to unleash employee preference and possibilities, opportunity marketplace to fuel ongoing learning and growth, and dynamic teams to enhance organizational agility. Together, we have evolved the HR technology to a new category, which we call the human experience management. To innovate fast and provide the best experience for our customers with improved performance and resiliency, we have been embarking on a journey to the cloud in the past two years. Now, let me hand over to Anil Lanka, who leads our cloud migration engineering team to talk about the cloud migration journey. Thanks, Eric. So in the next few slides, I'm going to take you on a journey about the SAP hyperscaler cloud journey and how the business benefits and migration methodology. Though this SAP next-gen cloud delivery program, we aim to keep our promises of delivery, operational efficiency, application stability, and everybody by modernizing and standardizing our infrastructure. This will be achieved by transforming our cloud on a state-of-the-art hyperscaler offering, which include Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, as well as SAP Cloud Infrastructure Offering. Today, the, the XSM infrastructure footprint is complex. We have 36 data centers across six infrastructure solutions. As part of this cloud transformation program, we are consolidating the 36 data center into 13 regions and six infrastructure uh, solutions down to three. These 13 physical data center will include all environments, preview, sales demo, and production. We'll be leveraging Microsoft Azure and Google Platform along with SAP Converge Cloud Infrastructure Solution. This forms two plus one strategy, and all customers of SAP SuccessFactor will have a dynamic future proof cloud infrastructure. Now, let me talk about customer benefits. The primary aim to help SAP customer all size and all industry to run their business by transitioning to hyperscaler. We are providing state-of-the-art infrastructure leading to an improved exp uh, experience, faster innovation, and greater stability. We choose our cloud partner as they are dominant player in infrastructure service provider. Their strength and commitment is to provide the guaranteed business infrastructure and continuous innovation for many years to come. This Next generation environment will enable SAP to facilitate changes such as 
uh, elasticity capacity, future minimize downtime for infrastructure maintenance. Alongside this infrastructure changes, we have been investing heavily to redesign and modernize our application. In doing so, we are breaking our monolith core into microservices-based architecture. This will make our solution more performant and easier to maintain in new environment. Though this program, SAP aims to provide greater innovation when more, uh, more frequently, other potential outcome of this investment will include investment in higher SLA and resiliency. So together with this hyperscaler and global network data centers, SAP will ensure compliance with all country-specific law around data privacy and data resiliency. Overall, this next-gen cloud infra transformation is a win-win for SAP and the customers. Now, let me walk you through the migration approach and validation for this uh, transformation. For our customer transition, we are looking at the, an approach similar to disaster recovery cutover process to a new hyperscale infrastructure. As outlined in this slide, this is an adoption phase one, which will start a replication to next generation infrastructure from existing landscape. This phase is conducted per data center and customer will not be impacted by any activity during this replication process. In adoption phase two is a cutover from legacy data center to this next generation landscape. And during this time, a final replication will take place. This is followed by SAP internal validation in a target environment. This is a seamless cutover similar to our biannual application release. Given the sensitive nature of HR process and data, we highly recommend our customer to complete their own post-transition task. Cutovers are expected to take place in extended maintenance window anywhere from 24 to 36 hours and is well coordinated with our customer in advance. The final phase is a DNS cutover and the normal operation will begin with the next generation landscape. Followed by success factor will begin decommissioning process for the legacy data center. Net net, customers standalone standpoint, no change and streamline transition. After cutover transition, cutover is, uh, is, uh, is over, the customer will access the same URL and application will be served from new hyperscaler environment. Now, let me talk about what happens behind the scene validation before we hand over the, in the environment. Validation takes place throughout the transition process, starting with infrastructure, security, load testing, functional testing, and, and, and internal system validation. All environments are validated for critical end-to-end -end functionality with standard out-of-the-box configuration. Integration testing is done for all integration offered by success factor. For example, API, BTP, CPI, Boomi. This does not include the uh, third-party uh, integration. The high availability, latency, and failover tests are also performed on target side to ensure we see the benefit of moving to the resilient, reliable, and high-performance infrastructure. Following the internal readiness verification of uh, hyperscaler data center, we then begin our data replication process. Once data is fully replicated, a mock migration is triggered in which all cutover steps are simulated except DNS cutover. During this period, team also tests the data integrity and system health check. Eventually, on the day of transition, like when cutover happens, uh, when we, 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 uh, after DNS cutover, we, we transition from source to target. Now, this is a scorecard, uh, the scorecard of the transition as of today. As of now, we have moved four data centers, 1,977 customers, and 31,766 tenants uh, to our hyperscalers. Uh, if you see from the, from, the, uh, from, the, from the slide, this slide talks about the number of customer, number of tenants, and data size per data center. As of now, as, as of now we have moved Toronto, Sydney, Singapore, and Sao Paulo, and Ashburn, Amsterdam, Rot, Shanghai, and followed by uh, Chandler is in, in, in progress. Now I hand over to Eric, and he will walk us through the architectural transformation. Thank you, Daniel. As we complete the migration, we'll get into the architecture transformation. So there's a transition to the cloud infrastructure in Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, and SAP Converge Cloud. In this journey, we have received tremendous feedback, positive feedback, and improved experience from our customers. 
by migrating to the cloud and apply some necessary optimizations, we have seen the increase the performance, improve security and the resiliency, reduce operational complexity, and the more importantly, a solid technology foundation to improve innovation velocity. Here we are showing examples of performance improvement we observed in two of our data centers migrated to Microsoft Azure. For example, in our Canada DC located in Toronto migrated last year, we have seen a 50% performance improvement for those requests, which are taking more than were taking more than three seconds, and 54% improvement for SQL response time that take more than one second. Similarly, in our Brazil data center located in Sao Paulo that was migrated in April this year, we also see 35% performance improvement for requests requiring more than three seconds and 49% improvement for SQL response time that take more than one second. This is significant. Besides, this has been a consistent pattern we see in almost all the data centers across all the regions in Azure, in Google Cloud Platform, and in SAP Converge Cloud. More importantly, this is just the just starting point. With a modern cloud infrastructure really enable us is a true technology and culture transformation for the years to come. Starting from this infrastructure transition to we are embarking now, and we will exit all our legacy data centers and run all our workloads in Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, and SAP Converge Cloud by end of this year. In the meantime, we have launched the cloud optimization initiatives to apply necessary architecture change during and after the cloud migration to truly leverage the benefits of cloud. We'll talk about some of those initiatives in the next slide. We will continue on our technology and culture transformation after the migration. The cloud gives us opportunity to leverage managed services and to re-platform our solutions to cloud native architecture. For example, we will accelerate our application modernization based on microservice architecture that balance the development, speed, agility, ways that architecture impacts to business and operability. What this mean to our customer is able to release futures and innovations fast with high quality, high maintainability, and testable microservices organized along the business capabilities based on the domain-driven design. Our examples of microservices include clock-in and clock-out, whole self-model, dynamic teams, and the card service that empowers the reimagined homepage. Data architecture and intelligence, which is so critical for every organization these days, there's no exception for our business. We build our data platform based on SAP BDP technologies, such as SAP HANA Cloud, SAP Analytics Cloud, and SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, and the cloud native technologies from the cloud providers to support use cases like learning recommendation, advanced search. By embedding and infusing artificial intelligence as part of business processes, it helps our customer to augment employee productivity, improve employee experience, and address new and existing challenges more intelligently and proactively. Data and intelligence is a cornerstone and a growth engine of our business. Culturally, we are applying DevOps practices with a mindset of you build it, you run it, and truly transform to a data act driven architecture culture based on metrics, such as service level indicators, SLIs, service level objectives, SLOs, and service level agreements, SOAs. Today, we are doing two major releases in a year. Our goal is to be able to do multiple releases in any given day through continuous deployment in the future. Now I want to show you examples to walk you through some of the cloud optimization um, backlogs that we have planned for the years to come. It ranging from application modernization to necessary infrastructure level optimization in both computer storage and the network, and to improve the observability and the security. 
So let's take application mod application reflections example. Talent of blob will infix the binary objects from the main database, and that will help us to reduce the volume of the database and help to improve the application performance. And we'll continue to wrap up our application modernization journey through the Carvalho project by completing the platform, platform and the recruiting RCM Carvalho. This will allow application to be deployed separately and be able to scale independently. We will also accelerate the containerization journey. More and more applications will be running in containers and we'll adopt the manager Kubernetes that will provide based on the Gardener project to provide a reliable technology foundation for our microservices and be able to apply auto scaling to reduce the TCO significantly. We are also to work on animating the stateful sessions that will allow application to scale horizontally. In compute and storage, we're also looking into new way of architectures. For example, for the background jobs, job servers, we'll apply a serverless architecture so that we don't need to provision the capacity upfront and really using the serverless technology to be able to grab the resources on demand. We will do the service life sizing based on utilization data, based on machine learning and artificial intelligence recommended from the system. And we will also implement automated policy enforcement and the change management so we can do the life sizing in an automated way. We're working actively to eliminate the single point of failure in our stack, which will allow us to leverage multi-available zones so we can deploy applications across the zones and help us to improve the availability of our services and be more resilient in failures and be able to recover faster than before. We are also working on the DR design, disaster recovery design solution to help to reduce the cost in the meantime to improve the RPO and the RTO, the recovery point objective and the recovery time objective. And we'll be able to cover more products in our disaster recovery solution. Of course, HANA. HANA is our major database. Majority of our transaction workloads are in HANA. We'll continue to optimize our HANA database by standardizing the spec of our HANA servers to reduce operational complexity. And we also introduce a scale out high availability architecture to improve the uptime as part of the migration. And we'll continue to optimize based on the actual workloads after the migration. Besides, we are also working on many other optimization topics in the areas of security, observability, network architecture, and traffic management. There's a lot more to come. So this wraps up our session for next generation cloud delivery and architecture transformation. For you to find more information in TechHead, please check out the other sessions in uh, SAP. And here's our contact info, here's our contact information. And please feel free to contact us if you have any question. Please enjoy the rest of your TechHead. Thank you.
Thank you.